just got back from 10 days in Aruba. It was incredible. While I was there, I met Patrick and his team at Aruba.com. Today's vlog includes the hotels and resorts they introduced me to on the island and the Airbnb I stayed at too. So come along with me, Bombini. Welcome to Aruba. Travel with Wendy channel. I love connecting and interviewing small business owners around the globe. I like to share reviews and hit the trails hiking. Thanks for joining me today because it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy. So the first question you'll want to answer is location. Where on the island should you stay? Aruba is not that big, so where you stay is going to totally depend on how you vacation. Most tourist hotels are located in what the locals call the high-rise area, which is located in Palm Beach. The low-rise area has timeshares and long-term rentals and is located near Eagle Beach. A few all-inclusives are located in Divi Beach. Another popular area for experiential travelers is San Nicolas, which is located on the southern coastline. It is culturally amazing and is close to Baby Beach too, which has great snorkeling and water sports. Look at this beauty. All these tiles. It's a little tiny. Right here. is also a lovely area to stay and has golf courses and rocky beaches and villas and houses available for rent as well. Last week I shared that this island is the most revisited island in the Caribbean so don't fret about choosing where to stay in Aruba just go back again and again and again like most people do. Thanks to Patrick and his staff we were able to see several properties. So first up is the Hilton Aruba Caribbean Resort and Casino. This was the very first hotel that was built in Aruba in 1955 and their open air lobby receives northwest winds as you enter this gorgeous property. Photographs and historic pieces adorn this hotel to remember its developer and first owner and family. They're also proud owners of the original Aruba Aribe recipe. This island specialty drink can now be found everywhere on the island. This hotel has over 350 rooms, 32 suites, and is sold by views like Garden, Ocean, and Deluxe Ocean View. But all rooms have balconies. The peace and tranquility I felt while walking around this oasis of a property was amazing. It is as if you're walking through a quiet tropical garden. The beach is also a perfect location for a wedding or renewing vows ceremony. Oh, so we thought of everybody. The next is the Hyatt Regency Aruba Resort Spa and Casino. I loved touring the Hyatt. After college, I went to work for the Hyatt in Crystal City, Virginia, so I have a special place in my heart for this hotel chain. The Hyatt Regency Aruba Resort Spa and Casino has 75 to 85 percent of their rooms with ocean views. This is the main tower I was talking about. Goes up to nine floors and then suites with the balconies right there that you see. But these suites are our ocean fronts are called the ones on the side, and then the one in the middle is called the ocean front sunset suite because you see a perfect sunset from there once you're on your balcony. As you can see, this is also one of the connecting rooms. Yes. Oh, lovely. Look at that. There we go. Look at that. This is our new addition, the adult only pool. 
And again, it's resourceful to categorize the two would be over between this and this setup. adult-only pool as well as private cabanas, which were amazing. We were fortunate to spend the afternoon in one. This is our private cabana. Very nice. And this is the adult pool only at the Hyatt. Very nice. And there's towels and free plates and water right there. Beautiful. Nice TVs. Excellent. And for loyalty guests, the Regency Club is also available on site, which provides a level of privacy and amenities as well. And the Regency Club is a VIP lounge for our loyal members. Okay. And uh, we have breakfast in the morning normally. Okay. As well as the drinks in the evening. And throughout the day, this is what we have. Due to the fact we don't have breakfast now because yeah. Chef is still working on his uh, on our menu. Yeah. So we have here, this is what we get to do during the day. So guests can come in and have a coffee, cookie, nuts, water, sodas, the world. Another cool feature of the Hyatt is the sunscreen mist booth. If you've seen Shark Tank, then you know what I'm talking about. This cool booth is right on the beach, so you can spritz up over and over during the day. The next resort is the Aruba Marriott Resort and Stellaris Casino. The Stellaris, as locals call it, is considered a world-class resort and casino. This resort is not an all-inclusive, however, you do have an option to create a package that is all-inclusive. There's several amenities that are included like beverage, dining, classes, and water sports. There are 24 suites and balconies, and the balconies are 100 square feet, so pretty large. The first floor has garden views, and the fifth floor has premium ocean views, so depending on which view you desire, make sure you keep that travel tip in mind. This hotel resort also has an adult pool and family pool as well. resort is the Tamarine All-Inclusive Beach Resort. The Tamarine is sandwiched between the Divi Beach and the Drulf Beach and is a two-story resort with 200 plus rooms, cabanas, a la carte restaurants, concierge services, and more, and is oceanfront. Oh, this is lovely. Yes. And walk right out to the pool. Cabanas and beach chairs are also available for guests and come on a first come, first serve basis. And uh, so, as an all inclusive guest, you will uh, enjoy amenities like the non motorized water sport activities. Okay. So, like a kayak or like a snorkeling. The snorkeling. Yeah. Or the, the mini catamaran, you know, they have like yeah. a small yeah. cat. They call it sunfish. Yeah. Yes. That's what I learned on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Super cool, eh? Yeah. There are also 10 restaurants to choose from, and you'll have access to all of them with the Tamarine properties. Their all-inclusive program is reciprocal, so you can try several restaurants out during your stay. Next up is our Airbnb. Sharon was an amazing host, and our apartment was located in Orangestad. 
Aranjasta is the capital city of Aruba, and our apartment was centrally located to the lagoon, restaurants, the harbor, and within walking distance to the beach. So our stay at the Lagoon Studios also included chairs and a beach visit to Reflections Restaurant and Bar and on the beach. And it's about a 10-15 minute walk from our uh, Airbnb and you can walk along the beach the whole way there. And it's really beautiful. We had so much fun. And I met new people from New York. Go figure. Our apartment had a full kitchen, eat-in area, storage area, and a walk-in shower. Sharon also emphasizes a personal touch as a hostess, and we were greeted with welcome notes and treats. The apartment was impeccably clean and had parking close by. If you stay with her, I promise you will love it. Okay, so what do you think? Did you get a good list of where to get started and think about planning a trip to Aruba? Stay with me, because next I'll be sharing where to eat in Aruba and also what to do. Have you been to Aruba? Do you have a place I haven't mentioned? Let me know in the comments below. I know I'm going to be back for sure. This vlog is from my personal experience and opinions, and no monetary compensation was received for these reviews. Thanks for joining me here today, and remember to live the sweet life. Dushi Bida. Thanks for joining Travel with Wendy, where it's always an adventure.